Hello and welcome to the final whistle with me, Daniel Watson, looking back at Tuesday's 3-1 win over Hamilton at Easter Road. Coming up in this episode, James, Danny and myself discuss the match. We've got post-match reaction from Neil Lennon and Flo Camberry. But first, let's remind ourselves of the action with Hibs TV's Cliff Pike and Danny Gilbreath. Aki's now with a chance to break forward, played wide to Redmond. Oh, off you Marciano, what have you done? That is an absolute disaster for the Hibs goalkeeper. The ball is played in. Marciano looked like he had that one under control, Danny. It's bounced back off his chest and it's the easiest of tap-ins. Camberry holds it up back to goal nicely into the path of Allen again for Stevenson. Forward now for Camberry. Hibbs playing one touch passes at the end of the Hamilton edge of the Hamilton penalty area. McGeoch to Camberry. Back to McGeoch. He's inside the box. Nice ball. Camberry shoots. Great finish on Paul Camberry. Absolutely wonderful build-up from Hibs there, Danny. Seven or eight passes, one-touch passes between McGeoch, Allen, Stevenson, Camberry, and the Swiss buries it in the bottom right-hand corner. That was a patient build-up and what a finish. Beautiful goal, what a strike as well at the end of it. That goal had everything with... Chips it in. Camberry gets the head of Ennis in the back of the net! And Flo Camberry has his second goal of the evening! He's not let the bangs on the head bother him there, Danny. Lovely guided header by the Swiss. Into the far corner beyond Gary Woods. And the 63 minutes gone, Hibs 2, Hamilton 1. Oh, that's exactly what you're looking for when you get a man advantage to try and take, you know, get yourself in front early doors. And a great, great bit of skill by Boyle. Back to Hanlon. Great ball, Camberry onside. This could be the hat-trick. It is! Wokanberry oh, gets the match ball. Goal number three for the Swiss. Hibs three, Hamilton one, 84 minutes on the clock. Composed finish there, Danny. He got put in beautifully by Paul Hanlon. Read the line perfectly. Didn't panic. Drew the goalkeeper. Knocks the ball beyond Gary Woods. And that should see Hibs home and host. It was a goal and an assist now in a row for Paul Hanlon. Great ball with his right foot as well. Perfectly weighted pass for Camberry, and that's the, the chance he's been waiting on. And Right, rain's on again in Easter Road, but we're no fussed about that. Hibs have ran out in the end, fairly comprehensive 3-1 winners over Hamilton, Danny. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward result, all in all, albeit a you know, setback to begin with. But you know, one thing I would say is it didn't put you know change anything in terms of Hibs' intent. They started the game quickly, positively. Um, the goal could have knocked them back, but another, you know, they just kept doing what they were doing. And you know, in the end, uh, 3-1 could have been a, a, a lot more, really. Yeah, records tumbling um, left and right tonight. First um, run of five straight home wins since 2001. First time we've beaten Hamilton at home since 2010. First time we've beaten Hamilton in any game since 2011. And first league hat trick since 2015, since James Keating's against St. Mirren. And that's me out of stats now. So, yeah, good win. Good three points for Hibs and good performance. First Premiership hat trick since Colin Nash against Motherwell. See, like, that's why you're the pro. That's why you're the pro. <laughs> 2010, I think that was. Would that have been six all game? Six all game. Yeah, let's only focus on Colin <laughs> Ellis hat trick in that game. The six all defeat as Cliff Pike Aye. has just put it down. Right, so, I mean, to go back to take it back to the beginning straight away, two changes for, for Hibs. We discussed, James, about how Whitaker had been trialled in midfield in the development game. We've seen him get a run out and uh, for about half an hour on Saturday there. Um, he comes in for Marvin Bartley. Marciano steps back in. Cammy Bell's got an injury, a calf injury, I believe. Um, are you surprised to see Whitaker start after our chat? Or? Um, I think we said it on, on Saturday that it would be interesting to experiment um, in, in centre midfield. And I think he actually did pretty well today. He looked very natural playing in that role. Didn't look out of position at all. And you know, it's very positive for, for Neil Lennon to have you know, that different option. We're able to bring Marvin Bartley into the play, which is never a bad option to have in, in this situation. But yeah, very encouraging from, from Stephen Whitaker. Yeah, um, th th I thought he was fine in midfield. Didn't, I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be his natural role for the rest of his contract to Hibs. Although I will say that the first moment of the match was he picked up a yellow card in the opening two or three minutes. Um, yeah. I think it was a tackle that Stephen McLean could have let go with it being so early on in the game. But he produces a yellow card and that kind of set the mould, especially considering Numeries, uh, Dougie Emery's two bookings um, that Steve McLean had to start issuing yellows for tackles like that, Danny. 
Yeah, he did, and it was good to see because you know we we've been uh, critical in, in previous games where the referees not let that far too many tackles go. Uh, he's going to book uh, players early on as long as he does it for both sides. You know you ca can't really argue. And uh, from the first time Martin Boyle um, got the ball, you, you knew Dougie Emery was in trouble. You know playing out of position as a left back. You know against one of the quickest players in the league. At, Probably the latter stages of his career, you know, it was a recipe for success for, for Hibs if, if you know, they got the ball out to Boyle and uh, you know, they, they did and, and, and that, that allowed them to get the man advantage in the second half, which turned out to be crucial. It's a Hamilton team that's no stranger to, to a few yellow cards as well and, and Doug Emery is certainly no stranger to a few yellow cards. Um, I think, you know, you would have uh, a pretty safe bet you know, if he's put um, he wants to get booked in this game and yeah. he does and I think you know like Danny says from the moment he gets booked he always thought he was in trouble yeah you know, against Martin Boyle so yeah the free kick comes to nothing but it's not long after that there is a cross that that causes all sorts of, I, don't, I don't even know I can't even say it causes all sorts of problems we can't blame the weather at that point it wasn't as if the, the rain was was skiting down like it is just now um, just a, a complete blunder from Ophir Marciano there's, there's no beating around the bush with it no, I mean it's uh, it's a, a routine, a, a, a cross that he'll, he'll probably gather a hundred times a week in training, and every single day practice that sort of thing. And you know, I think it was almost too easy for him. That it's almost like his mind was looking to, to what he was going to do next, uh, and he, he's, he's forgot about catching the ball. I mean, uh, there's nothing you can do to, to legislate for that. It's just an error, and unfortunately, when 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 goalkeepers make simple errors, that they tend to end up in goals and. No, that's what happened tonight. Yeah, it's, it's almost like his he, his body position's kind of you know you said it at half time that even when the cross was coming in you could see his body position was slightly off and it takes just that little bounce in front of him and almost comes off his chest and um, uh, the Hamilton striker is you know there to just tap it in. Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. I was going to say yeah. Cliff and Danny on comms, how did uh, you go about pronouncing the goal scorer's name? Number 99. Number <laughs> we went no, for Marios. I, I, left that, I left that to Cliff and he he done a good job of it because even if it, if, it, if it wasn't his name it sounded like it could be so it can, Cliff was convincing enough to, to make sure uh, he, he knew what he was he's talking about or at least it sounded that way. Uh, Compi, is that what we're going for? I'm, just, I'm sticking with Marios. I, I apologise to the Compi family who I assume are listening tonight but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So at that point, I think Hibs reacted perfectly well to it within about five minutes. We'd hit the woodwork twice. Stevenson takes a free kick. Flo Camberry, first of many chances. Um, he rattles it off the post. He's a very unlucky. Not long after that, Stevenson takes another kind of shot come cross. Uh, Gary Woods, I suppose it's a tale of two goalkeepers. He makes a mistake every bit as bad as Marciano's but he gets the luck with it bouncing off the post and, and not falling to a Hibs player and, and at that point, even only 15 minutes into the game you felt it was just a matter of time for Hibs to get the equaliser Yeah, definitely, I mean it, it was, a, it was a, another another mistake that just, you know, luckily from a Hamilton point of view never, never proved costly um, but you know, it never knocked Hibs out their, their stride at all um, going behind and, you know, seeing a few chances uh, come and go they, they just kept plugging away and, you know, they got their just rewards with what was a, a brilliant goal I suppose that's the difference between you know this season and certainly this regime you know, that this is a Hibs team that never really knows when it's beaten. Um, you know, regardless if it's you know, a game like this, home to Hamilton, a game we should be winning that we're, we find ourselves a goal down in, or if it's a you know Ibrox earlier in the season where we find ourselves a goal down, it was about sort of picking ourselves back up, you know, realizing we had enough talent in this team to you know win this game comfortably, which we go on to, to do in the end. But yeah, you can see the signs were there. It, maybe it looked like it was going to be one of those nights. Um, we had, you know, the same way we had one of those days against Hamilton earlier in the season. But we keep plugging away and you know, we get our just rewards for that in the end. Yeah, I think it sums up the mentality of the average football fan that when the Gary Woods pushes that one onto the post, I'm thinking the exact same as that. It's going to be one of those nights. But yeah, a few minutes later when Hibs score, arguably the best goal of the season so far um, I'm then thinking that we'll go on and win comprehensively so it's, it's the fine margins but the goal itself it's beautiful build up play McGeech and Camberry were key there was other players involved as well but it's not just the build up the, the finish as well as soon as that was lying the way it was Camberry's in such good form just now you knew that was only going one place and that was in the back of the net yeah, he's absolutely buried it beyond beyond Gary Woods I mean if you, if you take it back you know it was one of those where we pass the ball sideways a few times and it goes back a few times and there's the usual sort of murmurs from the crowd who just want to see the ball going forward and then 
you know, in a flash, Dylan McGeoch just completely changes the pace of the game. A couple of one-touch passes, ends up back at Canberry's feet, and I mean, he absolutely shells it right into the bottom corner, you know. There's no stopping that. It's a great finish, and I'm going to stick my neck on the line and say it's probably a goal of the season. No, I think that, listen, you'd be, you'd be hard, hard pushed to, you know, to find a better goal than that in, t in terms of, you know, the, the whole combination involved leading up to together with, you know, a perfect finish. It was, you know, it really was brilliant, brilliant play. As you say, the, you know, the, the crowd were groaning a little bit and, you know, the, the Hibs were doing the right thing and, 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 not, and not just, you know, rushing forward down, down blind alleyways. They were, you know, waiting for little gaps to appear and, you know, McGeoch exploited it beautifully with a couple of one-twos and, you know, when, when his pass was laid off to, to Canberra, you know, he, he struck it perfectly and right in the, bo the bottom uh, right-hand corner and, you know, just a, a brilliant, brilliant goal. Yeah, and it kind of, the, the chance he sort of dragged up for the rest of the first half. Handling came close, he had a half chance of a header right on half time. McLaren just missed a Martin Boyle cross. In comparison to Thistle in the first half against them, there, there were still mistakes being made, but it, it, you would be hard pushed for it to be a worse performance in the first half against Thistle. But those errors were still there, and, and Hamilton, you just kind of feared at times were were in a position that they could have taken advantage with, with the wrong pass or the wrong decision at the back. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a, a couple of kind of, you wouldn't even say half chances, but, you know, half opportunities where they could have broken through and it was one of those where even though that did happen and even that did exist you kind of you know there was times in the first half there where it was a pass went astray and you know there was a few bits of movement just off and cross wires and it never really felt that the crowd got kind of tetchy or, or worried but there was definitely you know a, a sort of maybe a slight nervousness um, it all seemed to stem they had the weirdest setup, and it, it seemed to be this sort of 7 0 3 formation yeah. <laughs> it was right along the back was packed they weren't bothered about the midfield but they were man marking Hibs back three and there was just always a body on the shoulder of McGregor Hanlon and Ambrose and it's, it's, it's credit to the defence that they kind of maintained their composure throughout that yeah definitely I mean and it's easy that's in that situation just to completely you know lose the head and just start whacking the ball upfield but we didn't you know we, at least we tried to keep it Hamilton did pressure it out from the back but I think as soon as the ball went into the midfield like you said we didn't really have anything and it kind of allowed us that 20 30 yard gap to, to expose and, or, and you know get the lights of, of Dylan McGeoch and Martin Boyle and, and Scott Allen involved in the game and when we start getting those three involved it's, it's difficult to stop at the best of times and, and Hamilton defensively haven't been great uh, this season um, and in the end you know our attacking sort of is just too much for them. More reaction with James and Danny shortly, but let's hear the post-match thoughts of Neil Lennon speaking with Cliff. Neil, we bounced back from that early setback and uh, won that game comfortably at the end of the day. Yeah, it was a very professional performance and um, yeah, I'm delighted with the attitude of the team. And you know, many times this year we've gone to go behind and they've shown great responses and tonight was another example of that. And uh, you can see that they've, they've got the bit between the teeth at the minute. In the second half, we were very powerful and, and in control. We started the game well. We were on the front foot, which would have pleased you because we were very slow out of the blocks on Saturday against Partick Thistle, but we lost the opening goal, an uncharacteristic mistake from off here. Yeah, it might be Rust. You know, he's not played a lot. Obviously, he only had maybe 10, 15 minutes of St. Johnson, and then he's had, them, you know, had an international break, and then he's, he's missed the game on, on Saturday. So maybe just a wee bit of getting back into the match match speed again but I've no no worries over him he's been tremendous this season and it, lucky enough it was early enough in the game for us to have plenty of time to recover and there was a great response that we had before we got back on turf yeah. we hit the woodwork twice let's yeah. not forget that but the first goal was absolutely superb patient build up lovely one touch pass and a cracking finish from big flow uh, it was a brilliant finish you know really well controlled shot and lovely football from Scott and Dylan as well I think Flo was involved in it a couple of times and um, he saw the width of the goal and he had a great shot in, so great response and um, then it got a little bit scrappy and we looked a little bit anxious at times, you know, taking too many touches and we just let, uh, let the game get away from us and we had to get them in, settle them down at half time and half time, second half we totally controlled the game and I can't remember Offie having any contribution to make really. The back three played superbly and um, you know, it was good to have McGee back to full speed and, and Boyle again, revelation for us, you know, absolutely superb. And the big man gets a hat-trick, so I, don't, I can't remember the last time 
we get a, someone to score a hat trick for us. So I don't know if it's happened in my time. Can't remember. You know, the top league was Colin Nish. Is that right? Colin Nish. His mother. All oh, right. Six, 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 He'll be telling me all about it tomorrow. Lee Griffiths scored one, and uh, I think uh, Simon Murray got one as well at some point. But well, it's, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice to see the goal, you know strikers scoring the goals and um, you know Jamie was unlucky not to get of a boil one first half, but I thought we controlled the second half very well. Obviously the sending off has a huge impact on the game, but um, you know Martin was giving him a, a really difficult time out there. Yeah, it was difficult for Dougie. I mean, he's not an out and out left back, and you know I'm found himself in the book early doors. It was, I thought it was only a matter of time. Martin was skinning him time after time, and, and the referee did his job. Well, he does that, you know, and um, it only takes you know. Uh, a split second, you know, and he's quick feet as well, you know, and he's powerful now, Martin. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's a second yellow, so I don't think they can have any complaints about. And we got the second goal almost immediately, and from then on, really good control of the game. And it's a great third goal as well, great finish, great ball by Paul, great movement from Flo. And we cut out a few others, so I'm absolutely delighted. It's been a big, big night for us, no question. We've said all along that at this stage of the season, the business and sometimes it's not. How you win the game, it's just about winning them, but it is nice to do it with a bit of style. Yeah, I think it's the first time we've beaten Hamilton for a few years, so you know, that's a nice monkey to get off our back as well. And they're a difficult opponent, and you know, they can be prickly and, and scrappy at times. And I thought we handled the, uh, the pressure of the game and the circumstances of the game very well. It'll be a difficult trip to Dingwall on Saturday, however. They're uh, a great result tonight against Partick Thistle for Ross County. We lift their confidence a little bit, so it should be a good one. Yeah, it's a great win for them tonight and uh, probably much needed um, and it just shows that they've got the ability to do that. Uh, it's a bit of a track at the end of a, another difficult week but we've got the bit between the teeth. We're not taking anything for granted. You know, I've just been in there and said well done, don't over celebrate, let's go again and then we can reflect You know, when the, the break comes for the semi-finals and get ourselves ready for the split but got one more big, really big game that could put us in a really good position going into the split. And from your point of view as a manager, it must be great getting these wins simply from the point of view that wins breed confidence. You're probably not having to do a lot of work with the guys. They're raring to go when they get out there on the pitch at the moment. Yeah, they're feeling it. You know, they're feeling the um, the moment, and you know it's good. You know, winning breeds, as you say, confidence and momentum, and they're playing with a lot of confidence at the minute. There's great belief among them. And like I said, we had an early setback, and it didn't rock them at all. They've come back again and, and played very, very well. And it was a comfortable win under the circumstances because we needed that win. And we knew, you know, Aberdeen could go and win at Motherwell, they've done that. But we're right in the mix. And what it does do as well, it opens a nine point gap over Kilmarnock. You know, they've got to win the games and um, it puts us in. Now we're looking at Rangers Aberdeen. From your point of view as well, you've got options for Saturday. John McGinn free from suspension. And uh, you'll be looking at that tonight and thinking, hmm, might I get back in? Well, he'll get back in, all right. Mm -hmm. That's great. That we have the squad that can cope without a player of his calibre, but um, he's in superb form and um, listen, he'll be chomping at the bit to play. So um, yeah, good to have John back and um, yeah, we've missed his drive at times, you know, particularly in, in some of the games. But any team would. So good to have him back. Good for Whitaker to get, you know, 70, 80 minutes tonight as well. A little uh, cameo from Swanee as well. Mm -hmm. Everyone's itching to play, you know, in Slivka. He's almost fit Brandon Barker, might have him in the score for the weekend. Yeah. And that's a huge bonus for us going into the, these games as well. And good from your point of view to be back in the dugout on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, it's been torture. You know, so a uh, mm, bit unmerited I felt, but um, it's done now, so we'll just get on it. The second half begins with uh, an early, first of many, Canberra acrobatic attempt. The first one, you and I kind of done the whole oh, imperfect thing. <laughs> we thought it was a lot closer than it was. The next attempt, we were just kind of like, okay, he's tried it again. Um, Aki's are still matching that Hibs back line, man for man. Um, but there's not much going on up until Doogie Emery goes in. It's a stupid second year. Similar to Danny Devine on Saturday, but at a much stranger time. There's half an hour of the game left, and you'd imagine Martin Cannon would be pretty upset with Emery for that one. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, you know, Emery was walking walking a tightrope from early on, and there was a couple of times when Boyle got in the second half that, um, you know, he, he tried to, 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 to knock it past Emery and showed him far too much of the ball, and you, know, it, you could see from sitting up here that, you know, he just had to try and take him on the inside, because Emery was, was so scared of his pace that he was overcompensating so much. Uh, you know, to give himself a, a yard start on Boyle, 
um, and the one time you know Boyle jinked to go down the line come in and he couldn't handle it and you know when you when you make a slide tackle like that um, you know and, and you get nowhere near the ball there's only going to really be be one outcome and no it was a, a justified uh, second yellow and no that from from that point you know that this was on Hibs to, to really uh, hammer the game home and take the three points. There's a few times in that first period as well after when we get spooked where I think it's Saris is coming across and they're actually doubling up on Martin Boyle and they're not allowing him any space but as soon as that stopped you know you kind of you felt that Emery was probably only two or three minutes away or, or one or two challenges away from, from going off and you know, in the end it's his first challenge it's not a great one doesn't get anywhere near the ball and it's deservedly off the pitch yeah and it's within I think it's within about a minute two minutes Martin Boyle Hamilton haven't had time to readjust or kind of double up on him again he's got the space he puts in the cross and it's it's a great header powerful header past Gary Woods and it's uh, simple as that Hibs are 2-1 up yeah, and I think he, he deserved his hat-trick tonight, Florian Canberry. Um, he didn't touch on his third overhead kick attempt, which I think actually comes after that, but ends up going the wrong way. But yeah, it's a good header. Um, gets enough direction on it, it's right in the corner. Woods isn't going to get there, and we're 2-1 and up and, and looking good value for a lead. Definitely. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Boyle was obviously instrumental in, in, in getting uh, you know Hamilton player sent off you know twice, c- committing his man. And you know when he did get the ball in the lead-up to the goal, he, he fainted to, sh- to shoot and... You know, cut the ball back, and uh, it was a great header by Canberra because there wasn't, you know, too much pace on the on the cross, and you know, directed it well uh, beyond, beyond Woods and, and the Hamilton goal. Yeah, and I think for all we kind of laugh at his overhead kick attempts, I'm sure Cristiano Ronaldo knew what was going on here tonight and was inspired <laughs> by it to the level that he done what he done in Juventus. Well, Ronaldo, you know, he scored that tonight, but he only got two. Canberra yeah, he yeah. got three. Yeah, so. I've never seen. <laughs> I think we know who's happier tonight. Yeah. How many hat tricks has Cristiano Ronaldo scored against Hamilton Ackies? Zero. None. <laughs> there Zero. you go. More history tonight. <laughs> Could he do it on a cold, wet Tuesday night Easter? <laughs> Uh, so I mean, between then and the third goal, there's again it's professional from Hibs. Hamilton Ackies at this point, they're the man down. That I think they only had two shots at goal the whole game, one on target, which was a goal itself. The the threat just stopped going forward, and uh, in that position, Danny, when you've got the one man advantage and you've got the lead, I suppose it's all about just not doing anything stupid, not over committing. It's just kind of being professional and, and seeing it out. Yeah, it's just about managing the game. You know, Hibs were comfortable throughout the game, even even when they went a goal down. You know, I, I can't remember Marciano making a save the, the whole game. Um, and you know, it's, you've seen situations before when that's been the case, and you know, a sucker punch go, goes in, and you know, all, all your hard work's out the window. But you no, know, they were really professional, and you know, Bartley coming on just showing things up a little bit more and. Oh, again, never looked in any trouble at all, and you know managed to, managed to get the, the third goal, which was the, the icing on the cake for for the team and particularly for Canberra. Yeah, and it's it's a great through ball from Paul Hanlon, a, a Scott Allen esque through ball. Mm. Hamilton have just got that back. It's six or seven bodies just in a straight line, right in the edge of Hibbs box, and Hanlon finds the gap to just slot it through, and it's another really nice composed finish from Canberra. With his bad foot as well, eh? Was it his right foot yeah, as well, right yeah. Foot as well, but you usually might be off surprise. I've seen that since I was six year old. As a <laughs> young uh, emerging central midfielder, you know, that, that that was not too rare at all. So I keep telling him he needs to get closer to the goal and uh, get himself involved, uh, especially after a goal at the weekend, a goal and an assist. That's uh, no, uh, Scott Allen would be happy with that, I'm yeah. sure. Did you enjoy surging running the first half as well? Was it the first half? Yeah. He charged through and went for a left footed effort yeah, from no, 30 I yards. I said that to Cliff and Coventry. I've seen him score from then, uh, you know, uh, maybe when the, the goalies were half the size, but um, <laughs> no, he was maybe a bit off balance. But like I said to, to, to Cliff as well, you can't blame him for going for two and two, and he's had to settle for the, the goal and the assist in two instead. I've well, seen Stephen Whitaker move from defence into midfield. You could see Paul Hanlon slotting into that number 10 role late in his, uh, yeah. in his career. In the whole his post testimonial <laughs> career. Um. It's usually when Ryan Porteous plays, he loves to do that whole Beckenbauer esque yeah. thing where he goes forward. I like that about this Hibs team that we're. We always have the defender 99 times at 100 to Sam Bros, but there's always someone running forward, committing themselves, and it just adds that little bit of uncertainty and it, it shows the, the confidence in this Hibs side, I suppose. Yeah, it was a great, it's a great ball through from, from Hanlon as well to, to pick up Canberra and a good finish by Canberra. He's very cool and very composed, but you saw that you know during the, the game, and, and like you say, it is usually FA Ambrose, but you know, Paul Hanlon is, I think, at times people forget how good he is on the ball. Um, and it's one of those that maybe only in the past couple of years he's been able to kind of express himself a little bit more and he's a very good passer the ball, he's very comfortable on it um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's always good to have that extra sort of attacking threat and at least, you know, giving you an extra man in the opponent's half and 
it opens up space for like Stevenson and, and Boyle and Scott Allen to expose it, and we saw that today. Yeah, um, I mean that that was probably it, it dried up after that. Danny Spawn, he came on, had an effort from distance, but the, the game is over. It's it's six points out of six against teams down the bottom of the league. Uh, we go to Dingwall on Saturday next. They've just had a massive four 0 win over Partick Thistle mm. that takes them off the bottom of the league. Um, so their confidence will be high for arguably the first time this season, Danny. Yeah, yeah, I think it will be. But you know, by the same token, you know, Hibs will have no fear fear going there at all. Um, you know, they've already won up there this season, I think. So you know, I don't think it'll uh, it'll phase them. And you know, fair enough. Uh, Ross County had a great result, but you know, Hibs are only going to concentrate on themselves and. Couldn't have asked for more this week. Two, two wins back to back, and you know, space of two or three days. You know, you can't ask for any more than that. Uh, ahead of a, a, you know, a big game against a team fighting for their lives. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be easy. You know, it's a long way up to Dingwall. It's a long way back if you get beat. Um, but you know, like I says, though, this Hibs team shouldn't have anything to fear from from the likes of Ross County, with you know, the greatest of respect to the county. But you know, there'll be no pushovers. They, they are fighting for their lives down there. You know. Confidence will be sky high. They'll be absolutely buzzing after that win tonight. Um, for us, it's important as well. The last game before the splits, you know, our chance to really put a stamp on and where we want to finish this season. I think it's what, a point between us and Rangers now. It's a point between us and Rangers. I think Aberdeen are four, four, four ahead. They get a good win tonight at um, Fur Park. So, so yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's crucial at both ends of the table, but we should have enough there to, to go and win. And then just going back to Flo Canberry, probably one for you James Flo Canberry best January signing since Ivan Sproul for Hibs could be a shout that could be a shout yeah I mean he's been brilliant since he came in and you know we talked about it at half time it's just how well his game is is suited to you know to Scottish football um, he doesn't mind sort of mucking in with the physical stuff I think he quite enjoys it um, like you said you know the refs you might be slightly more lenient than they are in Europe and he's clearly very comfortable in front of goal some of his goals you know, so far have been absolutely fantastic and that one this first one today was brilliant he takes the, the third one really well um, his goal against Motherwell his first goal was a spectacular strike and this could be a, it could be a really good sign a really astute signing from, from Neil Lennon and it's kind of you know it's exactly what we needed at the right time and hopefully now six, seven games six games to go in the season we can six, really yeah. kick on and yeah, boost us up the league a little bit and make sure we finish where we want to finish and now let's hear from the hat trick hero himself, Flo Camberry, speaking after the match. Flo, I suspect you probably enjoyed that game there tonight. Yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, I'm happy for the three goals. For first hat trick as a professional football player. But the more the more important thing is that we, we win because Aberdeen also won. So uh, that's that's uh, priority number one. We went behind an unusual error from Ophir Marciano. He doesn't make many, but we responded well to that. We hit the woodwork twice before you scored the first goal. Yeah, that, that can happen. I think uh, Ophir didn't want to do that, but uh, I think we reacted good. We we made uh, we played a good game. I had uh, uh, first when I uh, put the ball to the post, but. Uh, it was just a question uh, of time when we scored the 2-1 and after the second goal I made the 2-1 with the header and then there uh, was uh, more space behind, I scored the third. We had uh, other chances to, to score maybe more, but uh, at the end of the day I don't care if I now score in the goals or somebody else. Uh, we are a team, we have, we have a goal that we want to reach and uh, we want today and that's important. The last time we spoke, you said that you enjoyed the, the style of football here in Scotland. It was a real tough battle out there. You were getting knocked about, you took a few knocks out there, but you just got up and got on with it. Yeah, how I told you last time, that's why I came here, because I like this uh, type of football. Uh, I could be ma maybe a little bit happier if the, if the referees maybe whistle a little, little bit more for me. But uh, yeah, that's uh, part of football. As a striker, you 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 get tackles, but uh, they they tackle me and I score goals, so I don't care. And your uncle in the United States let us know that he was watching tonight on Hibs TV. You'd be delighted to have turned in a, a hat trick performance for him. Yeah, I'm delighted for everybody. For for my uh, uncle in New York, for my parents, for my father, for my brother, who always supports me in good or bad times. As a footballer, you don't have always good times, you have also bad times. 
and in that times you see who's who's uh, good for you who's uh, supporting you 100 percent and that's uh, that's my family and uh, of, of course i am happy that i score also for them and uh also for my uh, grandfather who passed away, I, uh, these three goals are for him. You seem to be appreciated as well by your teammates and you've struck up a very good partnership with, with Jamie McLaren. Jamie's a little bit quieter tonight, but I guess when one striker isn't quite on all cylinders, it's good that the other one is. Yeah, uh, last game he scored, I didn't score, now I scored, he didn't score, so who cares. One time I score, one time he scores, so uh, important is that we win as a team was a good performance uh, for, for, for us and uh, of course it's a special night for me. It puts us one point behind Rangers who are in third place, still four behind Aberdeen but perhaps more importantly nine points clear of Kilmarnock who are behind us. That's going to be a big gap for them to, to close. We don't really need to worry about them, we're worrying about the teams ahead of us. Yeah, we, we're looking up so we don't look behind. Uh, one point behind the Rangers, so uh, everything is open. There is now one game against Ross Crown Country, and then there are the five games, playoff games. And I think there is everything open for the second place. Of course, uh, we're looking up, not down. And I think if we continue like this, with this mentality, with this fighting spirit, I think uh, we can be uh, successful in the end of the season. I said to the manager that he's probably not having to do a lot by way of talking to the players because wins breed confidence and the guys seem to be just surging forward at the moment. Yeah, I think Gaffer don't have to speak too much to us because uh, we know what to do. Uh, as a footballer, you don't need too much uh, speak. Uh, you have to go there or you have to run there. As a professional football player, you have to prepare yourself to know your job. And I think the, the, the boys are doing very well. Everybody is doing his job and uh, of course we, we won now I think the five time in a row yeah. at uh, Easter Road so it's, it's perfect for us. And you said that that was your first hat trick in senior football, is someone looking after the match ball for you? Yeah, I uh, get the ball but I want to that everybody will sign the ball because it's not just my uh, profile, it's the profile of, of, for everybody. Without my teammates I couldn't score the goals so he's... Uh, is the ball is for the team. So that'll do us for this week's episode. Subscribe now to Radio Hibs through SoundCloud or iTunes to ensure you never miss a show. Extended highlights from last night are now available and indeed from all this season's other matches as well as a huge archive of other classic games on Hibs TV. Next up for us is Ross County at Dingwall on Saturday. Tickets are now available online and from the ticket office and there's live commentary available on Hibs TV for all subscribers. Until then, my thanks to Danny Gobraith and James Delaney, as always, for joining me. Thank you for listening, and join us the next time for all the aftermath from Dingwall.